Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on like and subscribe. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a 2024 Ram 1500. We'll be mounting a dash camera in here. I'll show you how to get the wires up to it, the power wires up to it, uh, without it looking like total crap when you get done with it or without wires hanging all over the place. Now this truck does not have the LED lighting kit in it. This is a halogen kit. Um, so before anyone throws the comment, just get a 15 pin connector. Can't really do that on this one. So I'm gonna show you what I did to get power up to my camera. This also has a rear facing camera. I still need to tuck the wire in the back a little bit. Uh, don't really like the way that camera mounts. I'll probably find a better way of doing it, but for right now, uh, that's where it goes. So in order to remove this head console, we're gonna basically open up the glasses holder. Up inside here are two eight millimeter bolts. It's hard to get the camera up in there, so I'm not really gonna stick it up in there yet, but you'll see them, they're pretty obvious. You can't really miss them unless you're not looking. And again, it's an eight millimeter. And once you get those down out of there, let me move the camera so you can see better. Hopefully somebody appreciates this camera angle because it's a tough one to get to. Right here where my finger is, there's a tab on each side. You push forward on that tab. And again, let me get the camera where you can see. Um, it's doable up here. Push forward on that tab. And then this unit will drop down out of the ceiling. Like so. If it comes down any harder than that, you're doing something wrong. Be careful not to pull down on the back. There's two tabs in the back here that'll break off easy. They fit in these little grooves right here when you put it back up in. Now my old truck had the LED light kit and the LED console. So I had a 15 pin to uh, dash cam wiring set. Uh, this vehicle does not have it. So as you can see, there's no 15 pin harness. There's no connector for the mirror to connect into. So I took my voltmeter black is my ground this pink and orange wire is hot with key on the pink and yellow is hot with key on now these go down to the uh, uconnect system so they should be fine all the time uh, i'm going to tap into one of those i'm probably going to do the pink since it's on the outside and the black for my ground i've already jumped it into my dash cam what i did is i took the 15 pin lead that i had it's just a red and a black wire uh, that connects to the usb for charging only the problem with the rams and most dodge all these usbs down here are connected into the radio so when you try to plug in your dash camera to it it automatically comes up and says this is not compatible and it doesn't run the dash camera for all models now i had a next base that ran off of the usb port below uh, the usb c to c did not work on it now this new camera i've got will not run off of either one of those it just keeps coming up and saying um basically device not compatible and then the uh, dash cam will actually come up and say uh, no media card, uh, which is weird. But basically, it's trying to read it as an input and not as a power source. So I'm going to have to come off of here with power. So I'm going to come off the pink and the black for my power. This is for my lighting over here. So I'm not going to come off of that because the wires are a little bit thin. And since I want a key on, I want a good constant power, I'm going to use the bigger wires. So after I figured out my wiring, now i got to figure out how to get my wire through to the mirror. Now this little hole right here actually goes out to the mirror so you can push it right through. Problem is the USB-C will not fit through there and doesn't come out. And there's no gap between the headliner and up in here to get it out through the headliner. So if I tried to take my USB-C, it would be nice if that was just a little bit bigger. You could shove it right up through there and pull it right down through here. So I'm going to take a drill and I'm actually going to drill this out a little bit bigger so I can get my USB-C through it and out to my front. So what I've got the step bit, I'm gonna take the step bit and start my hole, cause I wanna start at a little bit of an angle. And you definitely don't want that to catch and go through your ceiling, so. Just go slow and take your time. Now that I've got that started, I'm going to take my little test wire, make sure there's nothing above it. If there's not, I can see the wire through my second hole, so I'm going to go ahead and punch it the rest of the way through. Oh, 
We'll take a file and just clean that up a little bit. On my other side, this doesn't really clip on very good, it just kind of loosely sits there. So basically I just pulled it down a little bit, grabbed my wire and pulled it the rest of the way through. Now since I'm taking this off of a harness, I'm not sure which one's positive or negative. Um, the way I'm going to test this is basically I've got my two leads here. What you can't see is the other end is plugged into my camera. So basically right now the battery is putting voltage backwards out through here because it's a charging system. I'm going to take my voltmeter. I've got it set to like 200 millivolts. I'm going to put the negative on one side and the positive on the other and watch the numbers. So as you can see, I've got a minus um, 11, minus 12. It's going to keep going up as it picks up the battery. I don't want a minus. I want a positive number. So I'm going to switch the leads around. And as you notice now, the number is positive. That means this is my positive side. This is my negative side. All right, so what I've done, I took a couple tap cons. If you don't know what those are, I'll do another video on those sometime. But basically, uh, that lets you cut into the factory wire and add a wire lead to it without actually splicing the wires or cutting them in half. So I've added a positive and a negative. I made a little lead on there because if I want to change this out later, I just want to have some more wire to work with without having to cut those out or try to mess with the factory harness anymore than I have to. And what I've got is my voltmeter. I'm going to check them and make sure I've got voltage when I need it. So with my vehicle in the off position, I've got no voltage. In the accessory position, 26 volts. In the run position, 26 volts. So I know that'll run my dash cam now. Take in consideration when you're pulling power from something else. Um, old school cars, like I grew up on, were 12 volts, it didn't matter. These new cars are anywhere from 12 volts, some are five volt sections, 20 volt sections, 24 volt sections, 48 volt sections. It's possible that you tap into something and the ECU detects a voltage drop. It may create sensor problems and things like that. So do this at your own risk. Be willing to accept the consequences if you cut in the wrong wire. Uh, I'm showing you what ones I'm cutting into. If I have no problems with them, uh, basically I'll post a video so you can see that there's no problems with the wires I'm using. But that doesn't mean your vehicle might not be different. So do this at your own risk. So with those spliced in place, I'll turn my key on. And my dash cam should come on. And the dash cam is up and running. So all my wires are good, so I can put everything back together now. So I want to see what kind of room I've got in here. Now to put the console back up in, there's two tabs in the back and then there's two tabs in the front which lock in place. I'm going to plug my harnesses in here. Check my lighting, make sure my lighting works. So we're good with that. Now this excess wire, I've got as much as I need out for my dash cam. I don't plan on ever moving the dash cam. But I want to make a, like a little small, like two inch, three inch lead here. I'm going to grab some zip ties. I'm going to zip tie this to the factory harness up here, along with my excess. And then we're going to put our, our uh, console back up in. So again, I'm not sure if you can really see up in there or not. The lighting is half good in here. This zip tie right here with my USB cable going out. Again, there's enough lead here. If I need to pull that out a little bit more, I can get to it. Make sure you don't block your screw holes here because your console screws into here. So don't run your wire to the point where you can't screw that back down at. And then these guys here, like I said, I'm just going to fold these back and forth. 
and zip tie them to the factory harness up top. You can't see any house, so I'm gonna pause it. So there's my harness up in there. Plenty of room to tuck it up underneath of this. I'm plugged back in, so we're ready to put this console back up in now. So I'll put the console in, align the two back tabs up first. You're probably gonna have to move that harness around a little bit just to get room in there. Once the two back tabs click in place, push up on the front and you should hear it click into place. Like so. And if not, check and see why not. I'm catching my little wire. So push straight up and in. Those tabs click into place that we popped out in the first place. Sorry for the blinding blue light. And we'll put our two bolts back up in here. I can't really get the camera up in there where you can see them, but if you look up in there, you'll see the screw holes. Make sure that wire is not in the way. Start them by hand anyhow. And then you just want to snug these up. They don't have to be super tight. And when you're putting that back up in there, if you feel anything that doesn't feel like it's going smoothly, take it back down and make sure you didn't pinch any of the wires while you were putting it up in there. Now this particular dash cam has a rear facing camera. So basically mounted in my back window or right here is my rear facing camera. All I did with this was drop it behind the seat. And I've just got it kind of tucked in here. Nobody gets on my back seat. If somebody gets in your back seat, pull this little piece up here, it just pops out. Slide your wire underneath of there, pop it back down. And I just fished it all the way up through there. I didn't have to remove any of this. I did pull the jack cover out and just tucked it underneath of here. And when I pulled this down off of here so I could get to my LED lights, again, there's three tabs that pulls this little felt piece down. I went ahead and fished it in behind my wheel well. Then I'm gonna take this rubber seal. As you can see, there's plenty of room here. Then run that wire right up the rubber seal into my headliner and then across. Now I do want to work backwards. I want to start from the camera and work my way down. That way if I've got excess wire, I can tuck it down there. You don't want excess wire up top unless that's just the way you want it. My dash cam is probably going to be right there until I get rid of the vehicle. So no matter what happens, I'll have that same wiring in the same place. So again, I'm going to start my way over here. I'm going to just tuck this under the rubber, fish it down behind this all the way down. And there's my finished result. Like I said, you can't really see the wire except for up here by the headliner. And again, I don't have anyone that drives with me or rides with me, so that's not going to bother me at all. If you want to take a little more effort, you can fish the bottom of the headliner down and get the wire up under here. But the headliner is usually glued or attached really good to the front here. So it's hard to pull the headliner down without damaging the headliner. So in order just to just not cause any damage to the vehicle, I am leasing it. I just went ahead and ran it up across the visor. And again, even if you pull the visor down, the wire comes down a little bit, but it's not going to hang down to the point where it's going to get in anyone's way. Flip it shut when you're done. Hopefully somebody appreciates this camera angle because it's a tough one to get to. Right here where my finger is, there's a tab on each side. You push forward on that tab. And again, let me get the camera where you can see. Um, it's doable up here. Push forward on that tab. And then this unit will drop down out of the ceiling. Like so. If it comes down any harder than that, you're doing something wrong. Be careful not to pull down on the back. There's two tabs in the back here that'll break off easy. They fit in these little grooves right here when you put it back up in. And that's your end result. So hopefully this video helps you out. Uh, please click on like, subscribe, drop any comments you have below.